Good morning and welcome to the retirement ceremony in honor of Chief Warrant Officer 5, Yolandria Dixon Carter. Our host for today's ceremony is General James C. McConville, United States Army, retired. Please stand for the arrival of the official party and remain standing for the singing of the national anthem by Sergeant First Class Nicole Buffard from the United States Army Band, Pershing Zone, and the invocation delivered by Chaplain Major General William Green, Army Chief of Chaplains. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the rapids we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rocket's red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner wave, or the Good morning. Ladies and gentlemen, please bow with me as we go to God in prayer. Heavenly Father, we give thanks to you for this day in the life and lineage of our Army as we come together to reflect on the exceptional career and service of our Senior Warrant Officer Advisor to the Chief of Staff of the Army. With gratitude, we lift up this exceptional leader and woman of influence who has answered the call to serve our country with her whole heart. Throughout her career, she has faithfully shouldered her responsibilities and led with humility and character, making a profound difference in the lives of those around her. Now, Lord God, as Chief Dixon Carter sets aside the uniform, bless her and her husband Emmanuel as they start the next phase of their journey together and bless their children and their grandchildren and family and friends gathered here today to share in this ceremony to honor her faithful and dedicated service to our grateful nation. Almighty God, as this day is recorded in your archives, we remember your words to a, another one of your faithful children. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not do you harm, plans to give you a future and a hope. We commit Chief Warrant Officer Dixon Carter and her entire family to your care, and we pray all these blessings with a deep sense of gratitude for having served with her in your holy and mighty name we pray, amen. Please be seated. Ladies and gentlemen, General McConville. Wow. Well, well good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and a special welcome to DC's family and friends, and, and it's great to be back here with, with soldiers. It was really interesting when DC asked me to do this. She goes, incredibly honored. She goes, well, can you do it in uniform? And I said, well, I'll have to cut the ponytail off. I'll have to <laughs> shave the beard, have to find a uniform that fits, and, and do a little extra PT. But I mean, incredible honor to be here today. And, and thanks so much for coming out. And I, I, do, I do want a special welcome to the Secretary. Ma'am, thank you for coming out here 
Uh, this, you know, I know I get a chance to see all the things going on, so appreciate your leadership in being here. My classmate, the hero of my class, General Dan Allen, former vice, Dan, it's great to see you. And Gary, appreciate you being here and, and doing all you do to train our soldiers. The Sergeant Major of the Army, and former Sergeant Major of the Army, Tony, thanks for being here, teammate, and, and coming out and chopping wonderful. And I'm looking around seeing all the great soldiers and uh, just really appreciate when, when you become a retiree and a civilian, you know, be proud of what you do. I, I tell you, sometimes when you're in the Pentagon and, you know, things get tough and hard, you, you take a, a look, maybe a, a, too hard of a look at yourselves. And I know I was there and I was doing the same thing. Uh, but just remember, you, you know, we have the greatest army in the world. And those that have the privilege of putting on this uniform, it's very, very special. And, and quite frankly, it's special for me. It's, it's interesting. Someone once said a retirement ceremony, when you take the uniform off, it's the last time you'll go in to a room and have instant respect. Because when you serve this country, it's instant respect. And so be proud of that, because we're all proud of you out there. Uh, well, today's a special day. It's a special day for CW5, DC, Dixon, Carter. It's a special day for a family, and, it, it, and it's a special day, really, for the Army, because we get to gather here and recognize a remarkable career of service. 36 years, 36 years of distinguished service to the country. And I was very fortunate to spend my last six years of the Army with DC. Six years, two years as the vice and four years as the chief. And those that serve in the Pentagon call those dog years. And for those that haven't been in the Pentagon, you get credit for seven years of service for every one year in the Pentagon. You don't get paid for it, but you do get credit for it. And, you know, some people, although they were challenging years for me, they were incredibly rewarding because I had the chance to serve alongside CW5, DC, Carter. And, you know, when I take a look back, you know, and sometimes you do, you kind of move on, but you do take a look back, you think about some of the things that went on during those six years. North Korea, El Baghdadi, Iran, Soleimani, COVID, George Floyd, 6 January, 20 January, the uh, evacuation from Afghanistan, the Russian invasion of Ukraine and support for Ukraine, and, and probably a whole bunch of other things. But I, I was just so fortunate to have DC, you know, by my side. And you couldn't have a better person uh, that has the competence, the commitment, the, the courage to speak truth to power, and someone that really truly cared about soldiers and their families. You know, one of the great things about technology today is the Chief of Staff of the Army and all the senior leaders and the Sergeant Major of the Army are on the global email network. So any soldier, any person out there can pretty much go right to the top. And every day, someone was going right to the top, and I know Sergeant Major gets a lot of these, but I can't tell you how many times that DC took care of soldiers and their family, from private to Congressional Medal of Honor recipients. And her caring for soldiers was just unmatched, and, and people will never know. You know, the sergeant who sent me a note saying, you know, one of my soldiers is getting ready to leave and he can't get his Army Accommodation Medal. Well, she's the one that did it, you know. And the next day, they had an Army Accommodation Medal and that soldier left with that award. And, but it was just caring leadership, you know, all the way through that she did that. The, the other thing she did was she spoke truth to power. And when you have a team, you want to make sure you have different perspectives on your team. It's incredibly helpful to do that. And she did it in a way that was very thoughtful. How do we solve very challenging problems uh, that for the long term? And because of that, she made historic changes for our soldiers and families that many will never know. And you know, today we have a chance to, to recognize her. And you know, one thing I love about soldiers and serving with soldiers is every soldier has a story. And DC has a great story. You know, and I see the faces of her family there, her closest friends. I see the leaders that have served with her, you know, along this journey. And, you know, I really appreciate that your family came out. I'm going to get most, try to get the family from Maryland. Who's from Maryland here? Family? Okay. You got a hua. Uh, North Carolina? 
Georgia, okay. Tex Florida and Texas, and, and oh, big, big crowd from Texas. I was waiting for you, Gal, okay. So appreciate, I mean, you came a long way, and, and I know that means a lot to DC, and it means a lot to us to, to recognize her. And her husband, Sergeant Major, retired, Emmanuel Carter, we call him Carter, if, if that's okay. Uh, served in the Army for 31 years, think about that. Uh, retired after the senior enlisted aide to three secretaries of defense. He's deployed to Bosnia multiple times to Iraq with the 1st Armored Division. And next month, they will celebrate their 23rd anniversary. How about that? How about a hand for that? Okay. They met while they were serving at Fort Greg Adams, as formerly called Fort Lee. Chief DC was a staff sergeant in the Brigade S-1. I, I get to tell these stories. This is good. Okay. <laughs> I hope. And Carter was a senior drill sergeant. At the time, Chief D.C. was part of the Fort Lee Playhouse with a role in the upcoming production of Oliver. And if you didn't already know this, and I keep finding all these talents of D.C. as I keep hearing about them, but she acted, she produced, she sang, and she was a member of the Army um, Soldier Show. Never would have known. But anyway, she meets Carter during a break from rehearsals when they ran, each, ran into each other <laughs> at that romantic place called Burger King. And Carter, being the man he is, came up to her, and he said, don't I know you? And Chief DC, in only her confident, no-nonsense response, goes, you know you know me. <laughs> Anyways, from that great moment, they went on, they dated for two years before joining their families and supporting each other's careers together. And so, Carter, thank you for 31 years of, of service, and thank you. How about a hand? And thank you for supporting <laughs> D.C. so she could do what they, they'd like to do. Also, I'd like to recognize his son, Rashad. Rashad's here. Wave, okay, right there. And, and their daughter, Shantaria, right next door. And her husband, Bode. Right there, three children. I'm gonna, you know, boss next, and I hope I don't mess these up too bad. But Tola is here, um, and you're turning 13 in two weeks. So happy early birthday! How about a hand for her? Sade is nine, and Carter, who is seven, and he already told me he's going to join the army. He's ready. That's exactly. He's, he's all ready to go. So that's great to have them. And you know, Shantaria takes takes after her mother in many ways. She's accomplished many things. She works at the GSA and contributes to her community through coaching, cheerleading, and track. And she's a wonderful mother of the three athletes. So thank you for doing that. And you know, one of the things that you find uh, about senior leaders is, you know, at a, at a young age, Chief DC faced many challenges that shaped her. And after she became a mother to Sh Shantaria, she decided to join the Army. She found a path that brought her the ability to provide for herself and a daughter, a purpose for her life, and a connection with people, many that are here that became close friends. It, it's, so Shantaria, I want to thank you for the support. I know, you know, you know, with your mom doing all the things she did, without your support, she couldn't have done it. And you inspired her to reach her extraordinary potential. So how about a hand for you? And, and there's many others here, and I do want to highlight a few that have played an important role in Chief DC's life, her Army journey. Her father, David, is David, David, Army veteran, served during the Vietnam War. And he helped take care of Shantaria. While Chief D.C. trained and took her first assignment to Panama, he taught her to allow her Army service to be a way of life, but not allow the Army to become the definition of her life. So, sir, thank you very much. Appreciate it. <laughs> Carter's parents, Charles and Barbara, are here. Right over there. Thank you. Oh, wait a minute. You're too young for this. You just celebrated your 58th wedding anniversary? Must have been married at three years old, something, I don't know. 
No, but thank you for your amazing support. And, and again, we wouldn't have this great couple uh, without you. The Dial family is here, right over there. How about a hand for them? Because um, they met Chief D.C. in, in Chanteria at a church outside of Fort Greg Adams, at the time Fort Lee, in 1998. And what I've heard is you felt an immediate connection uh, with, and treated them like family, and you become her godparents and important of their life ever since. So thank you for your support. And again, I could go on and speak for a couple hours about all the great people here, but just if I didn't mention you, thank, thank you for being here and supporting DC. We wouldn't have her without you. So how about a hand for everybody else? You know, as expected, you know, DC executed excellence in, in really everything she did. She served at every echelon, you know, and beyond of most adjutant general warrant officers. You know, as I said, she's a proven leader in the toughest condition. I was just proud. Here's another thing I found about it. She deployed to Iraq, and she was selected to serve on the personal security detachment for General Odierno. Well, he was commanding general for the multinational corps, Iraq, and she participated in patrols and, and the security for key ladies, something you wouldn't think that you would see. And she's excelled in every role, from the tactical to strategic levels of her army, and is really, it, Dan Allen, myself, you know, key advisor, and many, many others on critical issues. And you know, I just want to tell you, I could not be more blessed to serve with you. And I would argue, not only are you one of the best warrant officers I've ever served with, but you're one of the best leaders, and one of the best persons that I've ever seen. And I really appreciate it. And, and I know. We have a lot of warrant officers here, and I, and I have to tell you that warrant officers hold a very special place in my heart. Um, you know, in aviation, we have a lot of warrant officers, and uh, you all taught me and my two sons, you know, the, the, the craft that, that, we, that we lived with for many years. You taught us, you know, I don't know how many times warrant officers, it, you know, maybe saved my life or certainly saved the mission, and, and, and I can tell you, having watched them in Iraq and Afghanistan over many tours, just how many soldiers' lives that they were responsible for saving. And I appreciate that. So I have a tremendous respect for all of our warrant officers who play a critical role for Army. They're trusted leaders, they're trusted advisors, and they're technical experts in their field. So how about a hand for all our warrant officers? And I have a pro tip for upcoming commanders. You know, take care of your warrant officers. Make sure they're valued members of your team, and that will pay you back like you wouldn't believe, and they will take care of you. And we are very blessed to have DC. At the, I, I talked about some of the things that went on uh, at the right time. Could not have a better teammate. And to me, she was the chief's chief, the chief's chief because she assured that, she assured that I and the entire team did the right thing the right way, always. And what, as DC and I talked before we came out, her, came out here, her legacy is gonna be all the soldiers, all the NCOs, all the warrant officers, all the officers and all the senior leaders that she touched along the way, and they're gonna carry a part of DC with her uh, as she goes forward. And with that, I'd just like to say, it's been an honor and privilege to serve with you. Thank you for 36 years of distinguished service to our Army and our nation, and 36 years of taking care of our soldiers. We wish you and your family all the best in your retirement, Good luck and Godspeed on your next rendezvous with Destiny. Thank you. Would Chief Dixon Carter and Mr. Carter please join General McConville in front of the flags? Please remain seated during the publishing of the orders and presentations. Attention to orders. The Distinguished Service Medal is awarded to Chief Warrant Officer 5, Yolandria S. Dixon Carter.
for exceptionally meritorious service to the government in duties of great responsibility over a 36-year career, culminating as the third Senior Warrant Officer Advisor to the Chief of Staff of the Army. During her tenure, she was responsible for leading cohort comprised of 28,000 Warrant Officers in 17 branches and 48 specialties across the Army. Her tireless commitment and dedication were unmatched as she simultaneously served as both the Assistant Executive Officer and Senior Warrant Officer Advisor. Chief Warrant Officer 5 Dixon Carter revolutionized many aspects of the Warrant Office cohort that included direct appointment and commission, merit-based, and below-the-zone promotions for Chief Warrant Officers 3 and 4. As the Assistant Executive Officer, she synchronized Joint and Secretary of Defense actions, provided candid counsel, and relevant solutions that enabled the 40th Chief of Staff of the Army to deliver sound and anticipatory military advice at the highest levels of the Department of Defense and execute the Army's priorities. As an innovative, caring, and proven leader, Chief Warrant Officer 5 Dixon Carter exemplified the ideals of the Army's profession. Her accomplishments throughout her long and distinguished career leaves an everlasting legacy of professionalism, trust, and operational readiness. Her greatest legacy is the leaders that she leaves behind who are better today because of her leadership. Chief Warrant Officer 5 Dixon Carter's untiring devotion to duty, love to the Army, soldiers, and families reflect great credit upon her, the Office of the Chief of Staff of the Army, and the United States Army. Signed, Christine E. Wormuth, Secretary of the Army. A certificate from the Commander-in-Chief is being presented to Chief Warrant Officer 5 Yolandria S. Dixon Carter. The certificate reads, I extend to you my personal gratitude and the sincere appreciation of our grateful nation to you for your patriotic service to our country. Your bravery and dedication in our armed forces helped protect your fellow Americans during a critical moment in our history and contributed to a world of greater security and growing prosperity. Your devotion to duty, honor, and country, in keeping with the long traditions of the finest military in the world, embodied the American ideal of selfless service. Our nation owes you an incredible debt. Your commitment and the example you set will inspire future generations to serve with pride and to keep our country secure. You represent the best of our nation, and I join our fellow Americans in saluting your honorable service. I wish you happiness and success in your next chapter. Signed, Joseph R. Biden, Commander-in-Chief. A certificate of retirement from the Armed Forces of the United States of America is now being presented to Chief Warrant Officer 5 Dixon Carter. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Chief Warrant Officer 5 Yolandria S. Dixon Carter, having served faithfully and honorably, is retired from the United States Army. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff of the Army. A certificate of appreciation is now being presented to Mr. Emmanuel Carter. The certificate reads, this is to certify that Emmanuel Carter, on the occasion of the retirement of your spouse from the United States Army, has earned grateful appreciation for your own unselfish, faithful, and devoted service. Your unfailing support and understanding help to make possible your spouse's lasting contribution to the nation. Signed, Randy A. George, General, United States Army, Chief of Staff. (laughs) 
Thank you, General McConville and Chief Dixon Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, Sergeant Major Emmanuel Carter, United States Army, retired. Well, <clears throat> you didn't really have to tell them that uh, story. <laughs> but, good morning. Thank you uh, for this opportunity to say a few words. Full disclosure, I'm not a captivating speaker like my wife, so I'll say that up front. I've had the honor of knowing your laundry for over 27 years. We've been a dual military family for 23 years. Together, we'll have a total of 67 years of military service. Thank you. There are so many individuals that have played a part and a significant part in Yolanda's personal, professional, and spiritual growth who would love to have this opportunity to say a few words. I decided to take some of my time to let them speak. Inspiring, she fills me with confidence, desire to accomplish and do something to make an impact. Your brother, Tony. Hallelujah, long time coming, job well done. Love you, mom and dad Dow. <laughs> Inspirational, impactful, Pastor Ringwright. Yolanda, you've always been concerned about Team McCullen, state of being, saying, how can I help? When there appears time was off, you would say to me, sis, you got the game face on, let's pray. We love you always because you love us, Tanya McCullen. I'm so proud to call you my sister. I bragged about you while you served and will continue to brag after you retire. We love you, proud is understatement. Your little big brother, Camario. Chief, you've been a mentor, confidant, rock, through the toughest moments in my career. Watch you ascend from W01 to CW5 has been a blessing. My family and I are incredible grateful to call you sister. I wouldn't be where I am today without you. Thank you for everything. Sergeant Major Nate Smith. Chief DC, thank you for your unwavering commitment, exemplary service, countless sacrifice you've made to the cohort. A woman of faith, phenomenal speaker, captivates the audience. When she speaks, the world's listen, leaves you with the wanting more. May your retirement be filled with lots of love, joy, relaxation, satisfaction, and knowing job well done. The Chiefs. And that's the one officer mafia, Chiefs. <laughs> See? <laughs> Yolandra, or D as I call you, I'm so proud of you and, want, and what you have accomplished. We've been stuck at the hip since 1994, Drum, New York. I've, I have been amazed by what you have accomplished, not only with your career, but how you've managed it while being a mother and a wife. I love you, sis. Now take a seat because you've earned it. I love you, Nadine. Mommy, I'm so proud of you. Because of you, your love, and your prayers, I'm the woman and mother that I am. You're an incredible servant of God, mother, daughter, friend, and soldier. Love you, your daughter, Shantaria. Thank you for being the example servant to God, family, friends, and country. Thank you for teaching us the power of faith and prayer. Love you, your son, Richard. We love you, daughter, and thank you for your service, mom and dad, Carter. Finally, we love you, Nima. You're our shero, the littles, AKA the grandkids. <laughs> Speaking for the thousands of soldiers out there that you've either mentored or assisted in so many ways, I'd like to say thank you. Before I close, there's one side of Chief DC that I want y'all, that y'all don't know, that may end up getting me on the couch after this. <laughs> <clears throat> and now that I know that you told John McConville that story. I'm kind of <laughs> glad that I put this in. You don't see the chief that's on the phone the entire drive home talking to senior leaders or another warrant officer or a soldier conducting some army business. She'll park in the garage, sit in the car for about another five, 10 minutes while she's still on the phone. She'll come in the house still on the phone, finishing the conversation, shower, eat, anywhere between eight and 10 o'clock, get back on her computer, fall asleep, 
back up round five, 530, all just to do it again. I'm not here to brag on my wife. Her bio speaks for itself. I just wanted to let you in on a little bit of the part of Chief DC that y'all don't know. For 36 years, when the Army called, you answered and accepted the mission. There's no doubt that Yolandra loves being a soldier, one officer, and all that it represents. And after 36 years, she'll still even assist after this ceremony if y'all just ask. Please don't ask. <laughs> I'm looking out for you. I'm looking out for you. The Army would definitely miss CW5 Dixon Carter, Chief DC, when she retires. Regardless of what I stand here and say, if you call, she'll answer. That's what we call soldier for life. Yolanda, I wouldn't be a successful Sergeant Major without your love and support. Thank you for all the times you talked me off the ledge. You told me that I probably shouldn't say what I was about to say the next time I talk to a senior leader or a soldier. <laughs> so I appreciate that, it saved me. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life, sharing the one officer journey, sharing the good days and the hard days, not bad. I've enjoyed the ride and I appreciate all the love the cohort has shown, not just me, but our entire family. You've made me a better man, better son, better father, grandfather and soldier. I celebrate and salute you on this day. Thank you, love you. Thank you, Sergeant Major Carter. Ladies and gentlemen, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Yolandria S. Dixon Carter, United States Army, retired. It's a pretty tough act to follow. But I'm here. I'm here. And I'm here standing today because of my Father who art in heaven. To God I give all the glory for today and for this opportunity. For as I said on yesterday, had it not been for him, there would be no me, there would be no you, there would be no us. So to him, I say thank you. And I thank each and every one of you that are here today, General McConville and Mrs. McConville, thank you so much for coming back um, from your schedule of enjoying family and friends and grandkids and your, your sons and daughters to, to celebrate with my family and I today to officiate. Thank you so much, sir, I appreciate it. Um, to Secretary uh, Warmoth, uh, thank you so much for being here, ma'am. I truly know how busy your schedule really, really, really is. So to see you today, it truly warms my heart. So thank you. And please give Mr. Drew also a thank you from Team Carter. Thank you. General Allen, sir, thank you for being here, traveling all the way down 95 to be here today. Thank you, General Brito. Thank you, sir. I know you had a long trip all the way, 90 minutes away. Thank you so much. <laughs> Who knows where you were in the world today, but thank you so much for being here. And to our 16th SMA, Tony Grinston, sir, thank you. I know you have an incredible job as well with AER, so thank you so much for being here. And to Mrs. Weimer, thank you, my friend, for being here. Chaplain, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for always bringing forth who truly matters, and that is our Father, and I thank you so much. Um, to all of our other distinguished guests, to our Chief Warrant Officer of the Army, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Aaron Anderson, and his lovely wife, Mrs. Kimberly, thank you so much for being here. And to our first official Army Senior Warrant Officer of the Army, Mr. Dave Williams, thank you so much for being here as well. All of our general officers, past, present, and even the ones in the future. Thank you for being here as well. And to my chief one officer, fives, fours, threes, twos, and ones, thank you for being here. You truly honor me with who you are, what you do every day, and how you do it. And for anyone else that I may have missed, this is not a part of my time, so if you're timing me, stop your timer right now, because we have to set protocol, okay? 
but this is me saying thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for being here. And trust and believe, I have not forgotten my family who is here all the way from Florida, Georgia, Texas, Maryland, Arlington, Alexandria, Ohio, Hampton, and everywhere else that you may have traveled from, Georgia, right? Thank you all so much for being here. Um, nothing happens in the United States Army without a great supporting cast to make sure that it happens. And every ceremony, every event, whatever it is called for, whatever it requires, there is always protocol. And so I want to thank protocol, I want to thank the old guard, and I want to thank the Army Band for all you have done to put this ceremony together as well as yesterday's events. So a round of applause, please, for each of them. And if you would do me the honor of just calling out your name, just call out your name, your name, like right now. Thank you. <laughs> As I stand before you today reflecting on my journey and the countless memories we have shared, my heart is truly filled with gratitude beyond words. As I transition to the next chapter of my life, I will carry with me the lessons learned, the fun memories, and the strong spirit that you all have imparted in me. Your contributions to the Army not only have shaped my career, but have also strengthened the very fabric of our Army and our nation. To our incredible Army civilians, behind every mission, behind every task, behind every policy, there are countless hours of planning, coordination, and execution. You are often the unseen, the unheard, and the unknown, but you are the continuity. So Michelle, Landy, Sam, Jill, Jessica, Dr. Tam, Elvira, Daryl, and Nadine. I see you, I hear you, I know you. I know your worth and I've experienced your value. Thank you for your part in raising me. To the officers, your strategic vision and your leadership set the standard for me to follow. Whether you are a general officer, whether you're a senior officer, a field grade officer, or a company grade, or a warrant officer. You have been mentors and you have been leaders to me. So I want to thank a few people who started on this journey with me. Colonel Weatherton, Lieutenant Colonel Fisher, and Major Middleton, thank you for empowering me. Colonel Lowry and Captain Demain, thank you for believing in me. General Allen, General McConville, and General George, Thank you for trusting in me. To Chief One Officer Five, retired Dave Williams, thank you for investing in me. And to the officers on Team 35, Vice 35 and 36, and on CSA 40 and 41, thank you for leading me. Our generation of soldiers, in my own opinion, are the brightest that our Army has ever seen. You are the ones who carry out the mission day in and day out with unwavering commitment and a tank load of questions. You challenged leaders such as me to think differently and embrace change. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to experience your brilliance, your talent, and your gifts. One of the most recited creeds of the, in the United States Army is the non-commissioned officer's creed. It starts with, no one is more professional than I. I am a non-commissioned officer. And then in the third paragraph, it goes on to say, officers will have maximum time to accomplish their mission. They will not have to accomplish mine. Your dedication made room for me to excel in my mission. There are far too many of you to call by name. So whether you are a corporal, a Sergeant E5, a Staff Sergeant, a Sergeant First Class, a Master Sergeant, a First Sergeant, a sergeant major or a command sergeant major or sergeant major of the Army. Your leadership 
Your mentorship and your dedication not only shaped your soldiers, but it has helped to make me a better leader and define our organizations. You are truly the backbone of our Army. The Army Warrant Officer is a self-aware and adaptive technical expert, combat leader, trainer, and advisor. They are innovative integrators of emerging technologies, dynamic teachers, confident warfighters, and developers of specialized teams of soldiers. From the front lines to the home front, the contributions of warrant officers, past, present, and even into the future, has always and will continue to be rich and rewarding to our Army. Thank you to the Command Chief Warrant Officers and Senior Warrant Officers Advisors that stood steadfast by my side as I served in the position of Chief Warrant Officer of the Army. Your mentorship, wisdom, and unwavering support have been instrumental in the grit, growth, resiliency, impact, and tenacity of the cohort. And to each Warrant Officer, it is a toxic desire to be perfect. So I encourage you to simply be your best do your best and know your best. And I assure you, your best will make room for your gifts. Your, your best will make room for opportunities. Your best will make room for those things that you never even knew existed. The world tells us, the word tells us that we should look to serve others. We should be kind to one another and that we should show respect and love. It also says we should always pray and do so without ceasing. So I want to sincerely thank my church leaders and my church family during my Army tour who prayed for me, they prayed for my family, they prayed for the troops, they prayed for their families. Because if it were not for your prayers, I would not be standing here today. But because of you, I am like a palm tree flourishing, bending but not breaking. I am still standing. To my friends, entirely too many of you to name, but thank you for being the steady anchors and guiding stars throughout my journey. Your unconditional love, your amazing support, and absolute belief in me have been my strength and inspiration. And I am forever grateful for your presence and being a part of my circle of trust. You heard my husband a few moments ago. There is nothing that I accomplish without the support and love of my family. My parents in love, Charles and Barbara Carter, stood in the shoes of their son, who when he joined the Army, left a pair of his sneakers behind. Every single morning, she stood in the shoes of her son, and she prayed for each and every one of us. The silent strength behind me is my family your unwavering pillars of love, your sacrifices and patience are the foundations in which this family is built. You've endured long separations, faced uncertain times, and bore the weight of unexpected absences. You are the heartbeat that keeps me going, the reason I wanted to do better, the reason I wanted to know better, and the reason that I am better. You are the inspiration that fueled my dedication to continue to serve. So as I reflect on my journey, I am reminded of the tests and trials we have faced together and the triumphs that we have celebrated as a family. In my opinion, family is not an important thing, but family is everything. Family knows your its, your isms, your flaws and alls. And as I mentioned yesterday, home is about people, not just a place. It is where love resides and heated fellowships are resolved through communication and understanding, not harsh words or anger-fueled actions. Emmanuel, Shantiria, and Rashad, we've navigated through adversity, emerging stronger and more united. Shantiria, you are the wings that lift us to new heights. Rashad, you are the eyes that see beyond the horizon. Emmanuel, you are the hands that build and sustain our family. I know that there are days in which you, you could trade me, you wish you could trade me. <laughs> the feeling is mutual. <laughs> but if God did not think that we could handle each other with his love, his strength, his patience, 
his peace, he would not place us together. And what he has put together, no one will put us under. So family, thank you for serving with me wherever you have been. My family has come to support me, no matter what state, no matter what season, no matter what city, wherever you've been, you've been there to support me. So thank you for serving with me and for being an all-star supporting cast to help me in the Army. I know with you, I can always find a place called home. And so while traveling to visit soldiers, I was engaged in a conversation that went something like this. What's your story? Why did you join the Army? And when the question was posed to me, I hesitated because some people ask, what's your story? But they really don't want to know what your story is, right? It's like, how are you doing? And then when you stop to tell them how you're really doing, they really don't want to hear it, right? But in this particular case, this person really wanted to know my story. And so I hesitated a bit, and I began to give bits and pieces of my story. And after that, he paused for a while. And he said, 15 to 5, write your story. I was inspired by General Gary Brito to tell my story and write my story. And what's really interesting is on last evening, my son presented my husband and I a book. And it said, I want to hear your story. He said, Mom and Dad, I want to know more about you. And so with the inspiration of 15 to 5 from General Brito and and just confirming it on last night with my son. Just indulge me just for a few more minutes. At 15 years old, I became a mother. The odds were against me. Society discounted me. Others labeled me. And been, many believed my dreams were over before they had even begun. But I refused to let those odds define me. I was determined to rewrite my story. I knew the truth would be tough. And when I'm talking about rewriting my story, it's not changing the fact that I have a beautiful daughter who has given me the will to live when no one else could. I was prepared to fight every step of the way. I wanted to prove that no matter where I started, that I could achieve greatness with hard work, resilience, and an unbreakable spirit. Joining the Army was the turning point. It was a chance to build a better life for my child and myself. But the path was not easy. Every day I walked around filled with pain, with frustration, filled with bitterness and anger and depression and even oppression. I faced racism and I faced sexism, and I was not always the model soldier. I overcame brutal counseling. <laughs> no one asked for an amen after that one. I overcame brutal counselings and, yes, Erica, Article 15s. <laughs> each of these challenges could have easily derailed my progress, but yet each obstacle only strengthened my resolve. I knew I had to succeed not just for me, but for everyone who had ever been told they could not, they would not. I was often reminded through every challenge, through every moment of doubt and every setback from my family that you have the power to persevere. So I worked harder, I pushed further, and I never lost sight of my goals. I surrounded myself with mentors who believed in me, and I drew strength from my fellow soldiers, from my friends, and from my family, too many to call. But step by step, rank by rank, we climbed the ladder. And so I'm here representing many images, images in which some of you have heard before, but I have to remind myself as I stand here today who I am and why I have become who I am. I am here representing the image of the unseen, the abandoned, and the rejected. I am the image of the oppressed and the depressed. I'm the image of abuse and insecurity and imp imposter syndrome. I'm the image of Greece suffering from significant losses time after time. I am the image of those that have gone before me and blaze the trail to light my way. I am the image of women who told, were told that they wouldn't make it or couldn't make it. I'm the image of a flower that has been stepped on time and time again, but refused to die. I grew back and I grew back even more beautifully and stronger and was watered. <laughs> by people like you. I 
am the image of silence that speaks volumes and the impact that closed the mouths of those that spoke against me. I am the image of the first who work hard not to be the last. I am the image of setbacks, but learn to be humble and to be better so that I can be stronger, not bitter, for the comeback. I am the image of community. Together, we can and will do it together, better. I am the image of my tribe, my village, my family, who sometimes does it scared. I am the image of worn off officers proficiently sound to tackle the most complex problem and excel. I am the image of a soldier who had no idea what to do or what to be, but I was told in the, in the Army, DC, you can be all you can be. I am the image of faith. All you need is a mustard seed and the word operating in your life. I am the image of Tanya, I'm the image of Tammy, and I am the image of Angie who told me everything I went through is and was necessary. I am the image of my mother who, after death, up until death, told me I am somebody. I'm the image of my aunt who filled the gap without complaint, the image of my father who defeated untimely death, the image of my children who understood my call to serve. I am the image of my grandchildren who embodies winning matters. I'm the image of my husband who is unfettered by my status or title but sees me and loves me with my its and my isms, my flaws and my alls. I am the image of my daughter who by her side stands her husband, who gave me inspiration to serve my country, to serve my nation. I am the image of a small town girl from Gifford, Florida, who moved to New York, Medina, New York, pregnant at 15 and retiring at five. <laughs> I stand before you having served in the highest position that a one officer can serve in. The rank is not just a symbol of my achievements, but our accomplishments. It is a testament to the power of determination, resilience, and unwavering faith. I share my story to remind you that no matter where you start, no matter the obstacles you face, you have the power to define your destiny. Believe in your fight. Fight, fight for your dreams and never let anyone tell you what you can and cannot achieve. And if they do, show them differently. And I want every young mother to know, and everyone facing their own battles, know this. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered the heart of man what God has in store for you. You are stronger than you think. Your future is brighter than you can see. Be the light that provides light in a, in a room full of darkness. Keep pushing, keep fighting, and let your story be one of triumph. My story, 15 to five. God bless our nation, God bless our troops, it has been an honor to serve this country, to serve our army for 36 years. This will defend, be all you can be. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated for the following presentations. For 36 years, Chief Dixon Carter stood the watch. While some of us were in our bunks at night, this soldier stood the watch. While some of us were in school or learning our trade, she stood the watch. Yes. Even before some of us were born, this soldier stood the watch. <laughs> From private to chief warrant officer five, in times of peace, in times of war, in times of uncertainty, Chief Dixon Carter stood the watch. She stood the watch as an AG soldier. She stood the watch as a sergeant first class. 
she stood the watch as the first chief warrant officer of the Army. For 36 years, Chief Warrant Officer 5, Yolandria Dixon Carter, stood the watch so that we, our families, and fellow Americans could sleep soundly in safety. Today, we are here to say, Chief DC, the watch stands relieved, relieved by those you have trained, guided, and led. Chief Dixon Carter, you stand relieved. We have the watch. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand for the singing of the Army Song by Sergeant Beaufort. The words to the song will be played on the screen in front of you. March along, sing our song with the army of the free. Count the brave, count the true, who have fought to victory. We're the army and proud of our name. We're the army and proudly proclaim. First to fight for the right, and to build the nation's might, and the army goes rolling along. Proud of all we have done, fighting till the battle's won, and the army goes rolling along. Then it's high, high, hey, the army's on its way. Count off the cadence loud and strong. For where'er we go, you will always know that the army goes rolling along. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We invite guests to congratulate Chief Dixon Carter and family in front of the flags. <laughs>